knowing ones retired with them. Oh, thank you, Silver. Visions of this stronghold of treason floating before them. Nothing occurred in the first part of the evening to awaken suspicion, though for the past few days it has been known to the authorities that the rebels, as I informed you, were evacuating the city. After midnight, explosions began to occur so frequently as to confirm the evidence already in possession of the general in chief that the last acts of an out-general army were in course of progress. The immense flames curling up throughout the rebel camps indicated that they were destroying all that could not be taken away. The soldiers along the line gathered upon the breastworks to witness the scene and exchange congratulations. While thus silently gazing upon the columns on fire, one of, one of the monster rams were exploded, which made the very earth tremble. If there was any doubt about the evacuation of Richmond that reported banished them all, in a very few moments, though still dark, the army of the James, or rather that part of it under General Witzel, was put in motion. It did not require much time to get all the men in lighting march order. Every regiment tried to be first. All cheerfully moved off with accelerated speed. The pickets were, the pickets which were on the line during the night were in the advance. Griffith, Brigadier General Draper's Brigade of Colored Troops Division were the first infantry to enter the city. The gallant 36 U.S. Colored Troops under Lieutenant Colonel B.F. Pratt had the honor of being the first regiment. Captain Pinnell's company had the pride of leading the advance. The column having passed through Fort Burnham over the rebel works were there were moving where they were moving heavy and light pieces of artillery which the enemy in haste was obliged to leave behind moved into the Osborne Road which leads directly into the city. In passing over the rebel works they moved very cautiously in single file for fear of exploding the innumerable torpedoes which were planted in front. So far as I can learn, none has been exploded and no one has been injured by those infernal machines. The soldiers were soon under the engineers, carefully digging them up and making the passageway beyond the fear of casualties. Along the road which the troops marched, or rather double quick batches of Negroes were gathered together, testifying by the unmistakable signs their delight at our coming. Rebel soldiers who had hid themselves when the army moved came out of the bushes and gave themselves up as disgusted with the service. The haste of the rebels was evident in guns, camp equipage, telegraph wires, and other army property which they had not have time to burn. When the column was about two miles from Richmond, General Ritzel and staff passed by at a rapid speed and was hailed by loud cheering. He soon reached the city, which was surrendered to him informally at the State House by Mr. Joseph Mayo, the mayor. The general and staff rode up Main Street amid the hearty congratulations of a loud crowd of colored persons and poor whites who were gathered together upon the sidewalks manifesting every d demonstration of joy. There were many persons in the better class houses who were peeping out of their windows and whose movement indicated that they, were, they would need watching in the future. There was no mistaking the curl of the lips and the flash of their eyes. The new military, Governor Richmond, will no doubt prove equal to such emergencies. When General Draper's brigade entered the outskirts of the city, it was halted and the brigade of Devon's division, 24 Corps, passed in to constitute a provost guard. A scene was here witnessed which was not only grand, but upon them the peaceful occupation of this citadel. Tears of joy ran down the faces of the more age. The soldiers cheered lustily, which were mingled with every kind of expression of delight. 
The citizens stood gaping in wonder at the splendidly equipped army marching along under the graceful folds of the old flag. Some waved their hats and women their hands in token of gladness. The pious old niggos, male and female, indulge in such many days. Jesus has opened the way. God bless you. I not I've not seen that old flag for four years. It does my eyes good. Have you come to stay? Thank God. And similar expressions of exhortation. The soldiers, black and white, receive these assurances of loyalty and evidence of the latent patriotism of an oppressed people, which a military despotism had not been able to crush. Riding upon, riding up to a group of fine-looking men whose appearance indicated that they would hardly have influence enough to keep them out of the army, I inquired, how is it they were not taken away with the force of Lee? They replied that they had hid themselves when the rebel army had evacuated the city and that many more had done likewise and would soon appear when assured that there was no longer any danger of falling into the power of the traitorous army. These scenes all occurred in terminus of Osborne Road, which connects with the streets of the city and then within municipal, municipal limits. There, General Draper's brigade with the gallant 36 U.S. CT drum corps played Yankee Doodle and shouting the battle cry of freedom. Amid the cheers of boys, and the white soldiers who filed by them. It ought to be stated that the officers of the white troops were anxious to be the first to enter the city with their organizations and so far succeeded as to procure an order when about the three miles distant that General Draper's brigade should take the left to the road in order to allow those of the 24 Corps under General Devin to pass by. General Draper obeyed the order and took to the left of the road in order to let the troops of Devon go by, but at the same time ordered his brigade on a double quick, with knowing that his men would not likely be overtaken on the road by any soldiers in the army. For marching or fighting Draper's 1st Brigade, 1st Division, 25th Corps, is not to be surpassed in the service, and the general honor it would, with a pride and a consciousness, would inspire him to undertake cheerfully whatever may be committed to his execution. It was this brigade that nipped the flower of the Southern Army, the Texas Brigade under Gary, which never before last September knew defeat. They were, there are many the others who may claim the distinction of being the first to enter the city, but as I was ahead of every part of the force but the cavalry, which necessity must be must lead must lead in advance, I know where I affirm when I acknowledge that General Draper's brigade was the first organization to enter the city limits. According to the custom, he should constitute a provost guard of Richmond. Cook's division constituting Draper's and Wild Brigades with the troops of the 24 was placed in the trenches around the city, and Thomas' brigade was assigned to garrison Manchester. Proper disposition have been made of the force to give security and soldier life, place the defenses of the city beyond the possibility of a surprise. As we entered, all government buildings were in flames, having been fired upon by order of the rebel General Ewell. The flames soon communicated themselves to the business part of the city and continued to rage furiously throughout the day. All efforts to arrest this destructive element seemed for the best part of the day of no avail. The fire department of Richmond rendered every aid and to them and the cooperative labors of our soldiers be belongs to the credit of having saved Richmond from the devastating flames. As it is, all that part of the city lying between the 9th and 14th streets, between Main Street and the River Inclusive, is in ruins. Among the most prominent buildings destroyed are the Rebel War Department, 
Quartermaster General's Department, all the buildings with commissionary stores, Shaco's and Dribble's Warehouse, well stored with tobacco, dispatch and inquire newspaper buildings, the courthouse, Guy House, Farmers Bank, Bank of Virginia, Exxon, excuse me, <laughs> Exxon, <laughs> Exchange Bank, Tracers Bank, American and Colombian Hotel, and the Mayo Bridge, which unites Richmond with Manchester. The buildings of the largest merchants are among those who have been reduced to ashes. This is a count of Thomas Morris Chester, Black Civil War correspondent.